strategies for determining uh, whether you're looking at a venous pulse or an arterial pulse. The waveform itself can be quite revealing. Um, the arterial pulse has a single peak that is quick and sharp. The venous pulse is double and it's undulating in nature, meaning it has a soft rise and fall. The most striking feature of the arterial pulse is the outward movement. Obviously what goes out must come back in, but it does so subtly and gradually and it's hardly noticeable. It's a very passive retraction back to baseline. It's the outward movement that's active and it's the outward movement that will catch your eye and that you will notice. The venous pulse on the other hand, the exact opposite is true. The outward peaks of the venous pulse are passive. They're hardly noticeable. It's the inward movements that are active and will catch your eye, the X and Y troughs. And I put an asterisk there because that's probably, I think, the, the best strategy or, or the one that I use most often. If I, if I see movement in the neck and I see an inward component, I'm done. I know that's venous. The breadth of movement can also be helpful. The arterial pulse tends to be pinpoint involving a small area of the neck, whereas the venous pulse is diffuse involving a larger area of the neck. The arterial pulse is unaffected by patient position, the respiratory cycle, and abdominal pressure. And, and the reason that's true is it's, it's just an anatomical thing. So, you know, the reason we see the carotid and feel the carotid where we do, the reason we see the uh, radial and feel it where we do is because that's where the, those vessels course closest to the surface of the skin. And that is completely independent of patient position, respiratory cycle, and so forth. The venous pulse, on the other hand, will be affected by those things. In terms of patient position, imagine you've got a patient at 45 degrees and you see the venous pulse in the middle of their neck. Well, if you recline them back to a more supine position, that pulse is going to climb up the neck anatomically. If you do the opposite and sit them up, it's going to move down the neck. In terms of the respiratory cycle, when we take a breath in, we decrease our intrathoracic pressure, and that's going to cause the column of blood to suck down towards the heart. So the JVP typically moves down the neck with inspiration. Now, the opposite can happen, uh, where you get a paradoxical rise in JVP with inspiration, and that's known as Kussmaul sign. We'll get into that later. But nonetheless, any uh, if there is mo appreciable movement in concert with the respiratory cycle, that argues for, and that su is suggestive of a venous pulse. The venous pulse will move up the neck with abdominal pressure. And finally, the arterial pulse is palpable, whereas the venous pulse is almost always non-palpable with a few exceptions. Okay, now I want everybody to imagine that you're at the patient's bedside. And re recall the steps that we take when evaluating the neck. So we, the step one was position. And we've got the patient at 45 degrees. His neck and his torso are in the same plane. The neck is nice and relaxed. And uh, we are evaluating the neck from a tangential perspective. And actually, let me, give me one second here. I want to pull up the chat box. And by the way, we're going to save questions for the end, but um, let's see. But go ahead and fire questions into the chat box, and that way I have them for the end. Let's see here. Okay, so now we're at the bedside here. We have the patient in position. We're now observing the neck from a tangential perspective. And now the next step is to locate movement in the neck. And I think we can all agree that there is movement in the top third of the neck right in here. Now, our last, our final step is to determine, is that venous or is it arterial? And if I were to describe this pulse, I would say this is a single outward peak that is quick and sharp. There's not really an, a, an active inward component here. It just goes out. That's what catches my eye. I hardly see it going back in. And it takes up a relatively small, it's involving a relatively small area of the neck. It's almost like you want to put your finger right there. And if you did, you would feel it. This is palpable. And these are all of the features of an arterial pulse. Joe has annotated uh, the video for us. And uh, so we can follow this, this cursor along the tracing and match it up with movement in the neck and we can see where that pulse occurs. So here, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. I want you to, to think of this movement and then directly compare it to the movement in the following video. So here we have a double peak, a double trough. It's the troughs that catch our eye down, 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 or in, in. It's undulating. It's got a soft rise and fall. We don't really appreciate the peaks very well. It's really the inward movement that catch our eye. And look how diffuse it is. It's stretching. We can see movement from the bottom of the neck all the way to the top of the neck. Okay. So these are all of the features of a venous pulse.